Welcome to Intaver Institute's introduction to project risk analysis. Part 1, what is schedule risk analysis? In this video we'll do a quick overview of what schedule risk analysis in particular, how do we model our uh, schedules for our Monte Carlo simulations, we'll talk about distributions, and then we'll show a very quick example in the software. Now what are distributions? Uh, for the purposes of schedules, they are arrangements of values with the frequency of occurrence. Uh, we can see on this example that duration is on the horizontal axis and it goes from three to nine days and the frequency is on the vertical axis and we can see there's almost no chance or no probability that we'll be at three days and the same at nine days uh, and the most likely is at five days and that's just about 33 or 34 percent. You also notice that it's a triangular shape. So we call this a triangular distribution. And we are able to model different types of distribution shapes. So it could be a triangular or it could be a more of a, a curve. And we'll take a look at those. So distributions, there's many types. And there are continuous distributions. So rather than being discrete values, we model them as continuous input. And this is because there is a better model of the real life data, the real examples that, that will occur. And there's many types of distributions. We saw a triangular one. There's also a normal. We see here is a uniform. There's also like a beta, a log normal. Uh, the most commonly used one in schedule risk analysis is triangular. Uh, we also see log normal and beta occasionally. Now let's take a look at an example of how would we build a distribution from real life data. So if we're going to install a kitchen sink, what we know is that sometimes it will take us a little half an hour, it could take us three hours depending on what occurs during that the installation. So what we'll do is we will install it 20 times and every time we'll record how long it took us to complete the installation. Now in this 20 times we saw that it took us uh, twice we were able to complete it in half an hour or less. Uh, 10 times we were able to complete it between half an hour and an hour. Uh, 5 times between an hour and one and a half hours. And finally when we more things went wrong, we forgot where our tools were, we didn't have the parts. Uh, it took us between an hour and a half and two hours. And this lets us build actually build up some probability that we can complete this activity in a certain amount of time. And from this values that we get, we can build these charts. And these are very common charts that we see in schedule risk analysis, being a frequency histogram or probability chart, and a cumulative probability chart. And you can see on the frequency histogram from that, those values we had, we were able to complete it two times in this time frame, ten times in this time frame, five times between an hour and an hour and a half, and again three times. And what we do see, it actually comes out as will be a triangular distribution, and it's also got a right skew to it, which is an important factor which we'll discuss later in future videos. Now the cumulative probability plot is taking that same data and it really it's stacking these bars one on top of the other and we can see here here between 0 and 5 percent we have about a 10 percent chance that we can finish the installation in that time and as we go across to the right a uh, longer duration the probability that we can complete the activity in that amount of time increases until finally when we get to two hours we can see that we have a hundred percent chance of being able to complete the installation of the sink in that period. So if I was to give an estimate to my wife, uh, how long is it going to take me to, to complete installing the kitchen sink uh, because she wants to get in there to do something? I'm probably not going to say half an hour because she's going to show up in half an hour and I'm, 
I'm only going to be halfway finished. So I'll probably give her an estimate of around an hour and a half, and that will give me an 80% confidence that I can finish the sink. It'll still give me some wiggle room. Uh, if I give two hours, I might finish in an hour, and then I'll, then she'll have, there'll be an hour where the that space is being used where my wife could use it. So I'll, so that we're safe and that she doesn't show up before I'm finished. Uh, but I'm not uh, taking on uh, too little risk, if you want to. I'll give an 80% confidence level, and that will be about an hour and a half. Now, one of the things that I did mention is that in schedules, distributions tend to be right skewed. And that means they have a long tail to the right. And the reason for is this, this is that there is minimal room for improvement. That means if we have a, an activity that's supposed to take us five days, we could probably improve quite a, a bit on that. We might be able to finish it in three days if everything goes absolutely perfectly. However, on the other side, there's a good chance that a lot of things can go wrong. And so if we finish in five days, on average, we have a good chance, but a lot of things can happen on the, on the back end. Meetings go longer than expected, supplies don't, um, don't appear on time, a test has failed, uh, it goes on and on. And so what we do is we see any of these risks can occur and we start to see this tail go off. And this has, uh, again, we'll talk about it in some future videos, how this has some uh, big effect on the schedule risk analysis and the results we see in real life. Now what I've done in the, the software Risky Project Professional, I've just created that install sync. And you can see that what we have is we have a low duration of half an hour, base duration of an hour, and a high duration of two hours. And if we quickly run a simulation, it, it, because there's um, only one activity, it occurs incredibly fast. We can take a look, and what, one of the things that we'll see is we can go and we find the probability. And these are the charts that we get out of this. <clears throat> and this is the key one, especially when we're looking at duration rather than finish times. And what we can see is that if my original estimate, let's say it was an hour, was the most likely, I can see I only have a 35% chance, even though I thought that would be my most likely. Uh, because of the nature of the triangular distribution, we can see I only have a 35% chance if I map that. So. If I wanted to be more sure that I would meet <clears throat> uh, meet a, a deadline, I'd probably put my estimate, my original estimate, when I told my wife how long it's going to take me, I would tell her it's going to take me about an hour and a half. And that would give me, and it shows right here, it would give me that 80% confidence that I would be able to finish it in that time. Still leaving some risk out there. So uh, I, I know that I'm going to have to work fairly hard I just uh, so I don't overrun that. But it does give me a good buffer. So that is the very basic part of how uh, schedule risk analysis occurs. In the next videos we'll just show some more complex examples. We'll talk about why we need to, why we need to do Monte Carlo schedule risk analysis as opposed to say PERT or a critical path. There are certain things that cannot be accounted for except in uh, Monte Carlo schedule risk analysis. And we'll go further and we'll, we'll show how we can integrate the risk register and risk management into the schedule and cost risk analysis.